And we are live for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. I'm Fred Lambert, your host. And as usual, I'm joined by the man behind Electric, Seth Weintraub. How are you doing this week, Seth? I'm good. Thanks. All right. Uh, I want to start out with a quick uh, big thank you to everyone who did the uh, re reviews of uh, the Electric Podcast on your podcast app last week after I, I, I called for it. Really appreciate it. I was, I was kind of down after we got it. Like reviewed attack by a few uh, a few people that we won't mention, uh, so that, that kind of hurt me a little bit. And I really appreciate that the fans came out and and uh, responded to that. So so thank you guys. Uh, but now let's jump into the news, and we'll uh, unsurprisingly start with um, the Q2 uh, delivery results. And um, obviously, for, <laughs> for those who didn't realize, we were doing the podcast like a, a day early. It's not just because of the results or came, came out today. Actually, we weren't even sure that the results were going to come out today. Sometimes it's the second day of uh, after the end of the quarter. Sometimes the third. Sometimes the fourth day. So we, we don't know. But it's more because of uh, it's going to be a long weekend, and know, we know a lot of people is going to be off tomorrow. Even though there might not be much celebrating in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> due to the current situation, uh, we. Uh, we know that the news is going to be pretty slow probably tomorrow, so we might as well do the podcast today. And yeah, um, I'm going to try to limit my I told you so uh, during the section of the, uh, of, the <laughs> of the podcast, but I told you guys, 90,000 deliveries, that's a... Come on, you were off by like 650, dude. <laughs> well, I said at least 900,000 uh, deliveries, so they, they beat that a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's the number, 900,650 for uh, delivery numbers for the, the second quarter, 82,272 for production. Um, deliveries were S and X at 10,000 units and uh, three and Y at, excuse me, at uh, 80,000 units. And they're still not uh, separating model three and model Y deliveries, which is kind of a bummer because I mean, um, we, we, we want to know what all the model Y is do, is doing. Like when we are still in the first few months of production and delivery for the car, that'd be it'd be nice. Um, but if we go by VIN numbers, which again never never ideal. At the end of the quarter, I think Tesla was delivering in the twelve thousand units, something uh, twelve thousand uh, VIN numbers. So that might give you an idea. Like Tesla might have delivered maybe ten something over ten thousand model Ys in Q two. Um, but yeah, if you haven't followed it, like last week, we we uh, we posted on some indication based on our sources that uh, deliveries. Uh, uh, well, to be fair, like I said, I told you so. But at the early on the quarter, I was more on the pessimistic side of of things for Tesla. I was like, oh, the delivery is not going good. It's going to be a bloodbath and everything. But then Tesla did the price cuts, which I believe helped uh, Diamond a lot, uh, like two thousand dollars on all Model Threes and um, what was it, five thousand dollars on all S and X. Those are massive task uh, price cuts that help with demand, and then uh, production just picked up after Tesla opened the factory. And at first they were they, they were lower, but now they confirm on today's release they confirm that uh, we, while our main factory in Fremont was shut down for much of the quarter, we have successfully ran production back to prior levels. So they they went back to prior levels. Um, but I mean, I, I assume that they mean that as like an exit rate because uh, uh, they were talking about eighty two thousand vehicle produced in the quarter which is not uh what they are used to prior to the pandemic so the production in q um in, in, in q3 is likely going to be um well definitely going to be over a hundred thousand uh maybe closer to 150 maybe uh, i wouldn't be that surprised by that uh, so yeah, that's also important thing to note here. Tesla produced eighty-two thousand cars, delivered ninety thousand, so the inventory went down significantly into uh, Q two. Uh, so we know that like early in the quarter, Tesla didn't have, didn't wasn't producing cars, so it was just working with the existing inventory that they transfer from Q one to Q two, and uh, they worked through a, a bunch of those. But now, of course, the big question is: Was that enough to turn a profit? Is what that, you, I mean, is that a big, I mean, not, clearly it's going to be close. Like it's not going to be a big profit. It's going to be, yeah. So if it's like $1 profit or negative $1 profit, is that a big difference? Or the, just the fact that they're close to breaking you just even? Want, you just want to send like, so speaking of breaking even, let's discuss earlier uh, this week, we posted an email um, 
It was two days before the end of the quarter. Elon sent out an email to employees saying that Brink even is looking super tight. Really makes a difference for every car you build and deliver. Please go all out to ensure victory. So that was his second all out email for the end of the quarter. So yeah, when he says break even, we are assuming he means like a tiny little profit because that's what makes a big difference here. And at, at the time uh, that we were writing that, um, Oh, I didn't post it here, but I think I think Wall Street was estimating like one point four uh, dollar loss per share. But uh, yeah, it, even breaking even would be major success for Tesla here, or 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 a tiny loss or something because uh, for this guiding for this quarter, like five billion dollar loss, <laughs> it was just insane. And um, I mean, they they did re just release their production and delivery for Q. Uh, three and uh, it was a little bit higher than than expected of Q2. I mean for Ford, uh, but it it was better than expected and it was a thirty percent um, drop versus last year. Tesla is at a five percent drop versus last year, so it's uh, like it's marginal versus significant. Uh, so uh, we, we have to uh, give kudos to Tesla for that. And, uh, Speaking of getting kudos, we should definitely get kudos to Tesla employees here because the the, the situation, the circumstances were, were extremely difficult in the quarter. And uh, for them to be able to deliver 90,000 cars mean that they worked their asses off like crazy. So um, congratulations to all Tesla employees. And I hope that you guys are going to get bonuses over this because uh, we, we, we've heard some things about the bonuses like Tesla's canceling them. I mean, the COVID and everything. And, well, their stock options are going to be in good shape. Yes, that's that's part of it. So yeah, let me check out, check this out real quick because the market just closed, I think. And yes, Tesla closed over one thousand two hundred dollars today, which is absolutely insane. And if you've been following Elon on, on Twitter, no, oh, he just tweeted. By the way, uh, thanks, Tesla owners, investors, love you. We'll work super hard to earn your trust and support. No, that's a nice tweet. Uh, I prefer a little, that little nicer than the previous ones. Yeah, time. that's what that's what I was gonna say. A little bit nicer than the other tweets it was uh, sending this morning, which was mainly like dunking on the on the Tesla shorts, which which I get like like it's satisfying when you you see a stock going up like that and you know that so many people is bidding against it. It's uh, it's a, a little of a warm feeling, but at the same time, it's it it's kind of weird because I remember just two months ago. When the stock was like trading at seven hundred or eight hundred dollars, something like that, and Elon was like, "It's too high." <laughs> so, if it was too high at seven hundred, uh, is it not too high anymore at twelve hundred? Like, I'm I'm not following his logic here. Like, did things happen in, in the last two months that now justify a, a twelve hundred dollar market cap? I don't know, uh, uh, not market cap, but price of stock. The market cap is two hundred and twenty-four billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's just insane. I mean, I'm long tested and everything. I'm, like I still own stock and everything, but I, I, I cannot rational uh, uh, in any rational way um, justify a 220 billion dollar market cap at this point. Um, I, I feel like to a degree, um, some investors are looking at it like. The, the COVID is affecting some other automakers so badly, like so so strongly that uh, they think, and, and not Tesla not as much, not just stock wise, but now we see based on the delivery result that they think maybe like this is uh, an event that's going to be like a tipping point where we're going to see a possible failure of, of, of some major automakers and Tesla just taking over. Um, I, I that's a that's a feeling that I get from like listening to investors and everything. Uh, I'm not sure that's something that's actually happening though, but I, I get the point to a degree. I think. Yeah, and we're hearing uh, I, not that this is a big deal to Tesla or the general auto market, but we're hearing things from like Karma and um, what's the other one? Byton. Uh, Byton that they're uh, you know pretty much closing up shop. So yeah. the other other small um, electric car makers are are not doing too well at the moment mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah karma was a little less surprising really um though it's a little bit sad because they have a few things coming up that look pretty cool to me like uh the the, the concept car and all the trick like little concept that look 
like was reminiscent of like the 60s or 70s corvette or something that that was really cool looking but yeah uh Biden on the other end though i think they're gonna uh come out the other hand one way or another even if it goes through bankruptcy and they have their asset bought or something like that because they do have a, a pretty big factory set up in china right now so they, they were on the last stretch of uh, reaching production really and uh, and now that happened and uh, probably having issue raising money for the last stretch and everything. So I'm sure someone will pick them up and use that factory at the very least. Uh, Wu, though, I, I don't really know. But Byton was like seen as one of the like three or four big Chinese EV startup that had global ambitions with uh, the likes of uh, Neo or uh, Xpeng and... Um, What's the other one? Hairways, hair, um, hallways, something like that. The, it's the W uh, W Motors too. Yeah, and I mean, I think they raised like a billion dollars, didn't it, Biden? Yeah, uh, I mean, it, the the numbers are crazy. Although it does seem like, like if you're a Chinese billionaire, you want to have yourself a uh, e an EV startup. Something. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, that was true for a while, especially the like, GT. Uh, Right, U Tang guy, the U Tang, JT. Yeah, he, um, he was the face of uh, of the Chinese EV startup for a while, and and then it didn't go well for him. But yeah, so so I think there's there's, there's some truth to the sentiment that others are failing and Tesla is prevailing, and uh, so it bodes well for Tesla's future. But there's still a lot of things to fix at Tesla. I think like you know, the Model Y quality problems that we reported last month are, are, are still prevalent today. Uh, and uh, I, I like it. now congrats Tesla. You, you, you managed to, to like de deliver a great quarter amid the, the, the pandemic. Uh, now let's focus on quality and, and everything a little bit because the factory is going to be open all quarter for all likes of it. And I don't think we're going to see any, major shutdown at, on that front maybe some shutdown on the retail front again but uh, nothing major on that front and and they still have to scale to like you know 10 100 x what they are now just to get to their market cap i mean their, their market mm -hmm. cap's bigger than vw or toyota and those two companies make a, a lot of cars yeah um, so to get to that level they're gonna have to scale up quite a bit yeah and to scale, it means new factories. And we've been we've been talking. I just posted in a few an hour ago about the Gigafactory Berlin, where they just uh, updated their plan for it in order to seek approval. They started construction yesterday on the actual building. They had the foundation set. Now they have the first um, pillars for the for for the the shell of the main building. And but they had to update a bunch of their plan, and it looks like. It looks like they're simplifying the plan for approval, and then they're going to ramp up after that with uh, more phases to the construction project. But the first phase has now been sort of dumbed down, if you will, to limit it to about 100,000 uh, vehicles per year. No battery production anymore. Um, they, um, they also move the drive unit building uh, to, to another location. And uh, they, they, they are asking also, but so that, that's where they're simplifying of it but they're also asking to um clear out some more of the forest around uh, on the site and apparently it's for a test track so they, they want to um on location test track so so yeah i i think tesla is going to be like in, in a great position where it's it's going to be like more secure once that factory is up and running because then they're going to have a factory on each continent that main markets where tesla tesla operates and and uh, model y is going to launch in europe because apparently Tesla is waiting for Gigafactory Berlin to launch Model Y in Europe. And uh, it's going to be a very popular car, I think, on the European market. So once all uh, three factories, three main factories are up and running, and apparently at the same time, Tesla is going to uh, build the, the the factory in Austin in parallel to, to, to like, I think actually it's going to, maybe it's going to produce car before uh, Berlin, which would, would be crazy, but it might actually be the case to a degree, at least just the general assembly for the Model Y. So, once all those factories are up and running, I think Tesla is set now for for, for a good future. But uh, yeah, it's it's still a long ways to go. Yeah, they seem like they're set up for a really good uh, next few years, mm -hmm. as long as they can keep executing. And so far, they have. Um, 
but it, you know, it is uncertain that, you know, the global economy is a little uncertain, but like, uh, getting to that, you know, next, next level where, where they're going to have to be like the biggest automaker in the world to kind of justify their price. That that's not as clear how they get there. Well, um, the other argument on that, that that's always uh, worth pointing out is that we keep t telling, uh, uh, referring to them as like the, the most valuable automaker in the world now, but is that they're not just an automaker. And while Inon has been laughed at a lot by seeing this uh, this thing where um, Tesla Energy might be might become an even bigger business than than uh, Tesla automotive business. Um, I'm starting to see some indication that that there's there's some truth to him saying that, especially if I look at the backlog of uh, mega packs and power walls, uh, that's that's in the megawatt hour, people. Like yeah, that's like a backlog in the mega. Uh, no, excuse me, in the gigawatt hour. <laughs> I got that wrong. So they just recently sold their what hundred thousandth uh, power wall. Power wall. They're selling mega packs like crazy. Yeah. I mean, I guess it all comes down to their their battery production, right? Yes, yes, yes. So that that will play out into the battery day in September. Tesla will lay out the plans to, to be able to fulfill that. Uh, but but yeah, right now, like the the basically have infinite demand for for Powerwall uh, and infinite demand for for Mega Pack. So the the it's just about ramping up production of battery cells and and the product themselves, the devices themselves. So that's big business. And then you had to add the solar aspect to it, which has been a lot slower, obviously, but uh, we, we've seen clear indication that Tesla is now ready to ramp that up, uh, both with the solar roof, which is getting, we, we posted last weekend a pretty good review of it. It looks like the owners are liking it, but the solar panels is still the biggest business, uh, bigger than the solar roof. And I mean, we reported on the on, on the price matching they did last month, and then the, the the price cut that they did a few weeks ago, and those are are like industry leading right now. So, so but it, that's going to be again limited. Like solar is very limited on uh, how many installers you have. It's as simple as that. Like you know, how fast you can install them and how many installers you have, because uh, the solar panels are becoming pretty much of a commodity, and um, the, the, there's clear leaders in the. In several aspects, like in the higher hand panels, and in the we were just talking before the podcast about Solar Edge in terms of inverters and everything like that. So you you can get yourself a pretty good system. It's how fast you install them, and, and it's all the economics of them work. And Tesla has clearly spent some time updating their economics of their system, and uh, uh, with the price matching too, they, they they are basically saying like we we are prepared to offer the best price uh, for installation, and we just want to install them as as many as we can. Uh, so in, in the near future, that's going to be big business too. And Tesla tried that, tried to scale it with Solar City, but failed economically speaking on an economic basis. Like it, it was getting too much for Solar City because of installing the panels, um, like uh, taking care of the upfront cost and then uh, taking recurring revenue over time for, for the electricity that it generates. But Tesla is in a much better situation after having acquired Solar City and now actually making money. Um, or maybe not this quarter, we'll see, but in general. So the, the, with their profitable automotive business backing uh, uh, solar energy and with the new solar subscription model where Tesla still has to put out the upfront cost of a system uh, to get the, the recurring revenue, now they have the economics to back that that model. So I think a lot of people is going to grab that. Um, so look out for the next um, earnings session. We, uh, I, I believe we're going to see a ramp up in um, solar deployed in Q2. And the big one is going to come in Q3 and Q4. Uh, I, I'm not saying we're going to go back to the same volume that Tesla was deploying uh, pre-acquisition, uh, pre but it's going to get close pretty quick, I think. Something to look at. All right. The other big product from Tesla is obviously self-driving and autopilot. And uh, last night, Elon made some interesting comments about the autopilot rewrite that we've been talking about for a few months now. Uh, Tesla has been rethinking the whole software stack, rewriting it from the bottom. Uh, the neural nets are absorbing more of the problem. So we reported just uh, uh, a few weeks ago on uh, Andre Caperdi making a call, uh, a presentation, and, and saying that Tesla is now up to, I think, 48 neural nets working on autopilot. And specifically regarding the rewrite and the new labeling system, Elon has now put a timeline to it that he, he thinks is going to be releasable in two to four months. 
And uh, yeah, he, he again talked about the 3D labeling being the biggest part of the solution here. But um, yeah, two or four months, they think it's going to be able to deploy the new the new uh, autopilot rewrite, and that will enable them to automatically have a lot more functionality. But the the timeline of releasing this functionality is uh, going to be dependent, of course, proving that it's it's safe first. So it's nice to guess a little timeline on that front. But as I put an electric take on this, does it bowl wells for the robo taxi a million robo taxi twenty twenty though? <laughs> I don't think so because. I mean, it sounds good, like a, a, a significant improvement in the autopilot system that uh, underlines the FSD, the full self-driving, but uh, in, in two to four months. But that that doesn't sound like full self-driving. It sounds just like a, a significant uh, improvement of the autopilot and functionality. It doesn't sound like a robo taxi, really. So if that's coming in two and four months, and then gradually more functionality after that, uh, I think we can safely say that the million robo taxi by the end of 2020. Uh, is another slip. It's going to be another timeline that's going to slip. Long shot. It's a long shot. At this <laughs> it's point. a long shot. Yeah. I mean, back in April, Elon was saying that it's still the case. Uh, it's, it's still, he's, he's sticking to that timeline, but I don't know. I mean, to, to be fair, I, I don't I don't blame Tesla at all for um, rewriting Autopilot because I, I think that I think the approach, the vision-based approach, is still the right one, and it's the one that makes the most sense to me. The, the way Tesla is approaching it, but in in the execution, it's such a big project that you know that they're going to have to to align the like readjust their execution along the way. And I think that's that full rewrite of the pilot is definitely a real a realignment of the execution. So I don't blame them for that, but uh, I blame Elon for being a little bit too aggressive with his timeline. <laughs> yeah, and that's not anything new and I'm sure it's no. not going to change in the future either. Yeah. Um, what do you think though? Um, you know, this is a totally new stack. Do you think there's going to be any kind of like outlier type of issues where, you know, the, the current software has been in use for years now and theoretically all the thing, you know, like the weird things where it would like run into the back of a fire truck or run in, you know, lane splitting, it would go right down the middle, but, you know, like those kind of things. Are we going to see a new, um kind of wave of those things once the new stack comes in yeah that's one thing i'll ask i'll ask elon on on, on twitter about and I, I wish he would answer because I, I feel like that's a real possibility when you have a full rewrite like that they, they bounce to be a, a lot of improvement of course you're aiming for improvement but there, there bounce to be some regressions too uh in in some of the features uh especially with with neural nets or, or if you it's gonna have to relearn to a degree some some things and um yeah, I, I would expect some features, maybe some functionality to, to regress and then maybe pr improve faster though. So like you know, if, if some feature had plateaued or, or uh, under the previous stack, maybe it's going to be able to uh, improve on, on that stack, even if it regressed a little bit first. So it's not that big of a deal, but I think that's what Elon is talking about when he says like releasing the functionality as they prove safe. So it's going to be an interesting development, but I wish Elon would speak out a little bit on that that would be interesting for people to learn um fsd pricing so <clears throat> excuse me as elon uh, promised uh, earlier in the quarter on july 1st the price did increase to eight thousand dollars which is not cheap uh right. what do you think i mean i i think tesla just find a go found a gold mine basically <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised if that happens every quarter now like uh it's been happening maybe like every like six to twelve months I think the rate of increase in pricing of FSD is going to accelerate, especially if he's talking now about like a three to four months release of the rewrite, which is again supposed to bring more functionality. So let's say that uh, the rewrites and Elon has hinted to that before the rewrites enable like the reverse smart su summon, which I think is one of the biggest, like non just like non not an exactly a full self driving system, but one pre uh, full self driving system i think it's the most anticipated feature one of the most useful too like you you just go to a store or something you and uh you 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 drop yourself off on the front door and just the cars go parks it itself instead of the um current version of smart summon which is the contrary of it so, but that's it they, they release that then they can justify another price increase and then they can justify a bigger take of um uh, the recognizing revenue from from the fsd package 
So I think Tesla's going to keep doing that at the end of every quarter and just basically pad their financials with it because that's what it's that's what it does really. If they can recognize more revenue and then convert uh, convince more people to uh, to buy it. Uh, but speaking of the take rate, I think Tesla should actually disclose the take rate uh, during their financials because it's such a big part of it at this point. Right. Like it's it's uh, whether people take the FSD or not, that must have a major effect on Tesla's gross margin per car. So, and what do you think it is? I I think it was around probably like 25, 30 percent before the price increase announcement last quarter. Now, after the price increase announcement, I have no idea. Uh, it might have been like a 10, 20, 30 percent increase. I don't know. Maybe like half the people are buying it now. I have no clue whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I imagine if we did like a poll on our, our site, it would be a little bit higher because we're kind of tend toward the fans a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's hard to say. Like uh, for me, it's still hard to imagine because, you know, we've been led to believe so many times that full self driving mm -hmm. is so close. And yeah. to me, like, I just don't know. Like, this isn't something that's ever been done before. So mm -hmm. we don't know. And, you know, I, I, I leased a car. Uh, one of my options when I leased the car was to buy full self driving. Yeah. Over the last three years, I'm about to give back my car. And I would, you know, if I had bought full self driving as part of the lease, I would never have gotten any, you know, mm -hmm. any, any use out of it. So yeah. it's, it's kind of hard to imagine. And, you know, I'm getting a Model Y and I'm not going to get full self driving at that point. Yeah. Um, maybe it's a mistake. Uh, maybe, you know, by the time I, I realize I need full self driving, it'll be, you know, 20,000 bucks or something. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the, the thing that they are hinting at really to try to convince people to go first. But yeah, it's really hard to gauge how many people are falling for that really, or I say falling, it might not be falling for it, it might actually be a good advice. Um, I just, I just don't know, but, but yeah, man, the, the subscription version of FSD coming later this year might also is going to probably increase the take rate, especially if we talk about people that uh, are leasing like yourself, like you just you just referenced. And oh, not looking good right now. My my page for uh, the podcast just froze. Okay, it's back on. Because uh, Tesla just disclosed the new leasing rate of, of cars subject to leasing. It's about 5% of total car. So it's actually not that big of a percentage, but you would have to assume that all like ninety nine percent of the five percent don't buy the FSD. So even if you if you can get like a a five percent of that five percent, it's still it's still a decent amount. All right. The new zero emission car bill that is being uh, prepared really uh, by Democrats. Um, was announced this week. It's not bad, really. Uh, it's aiming for 100% new car sell to be electric by 2035. Uh, also, also net zero emission uh, for greenhouse gas for electric utilities by 2040, uh, because those two obviously goes hand in hand. If you uh, reduce emission in uh, the uh, electric grid. Your car is going to charge, um, going to be cleaner, and your electric car is going to charge cleaner. So that, that those are good thing, of course. Now, I mean, the Democrats announced that, but there's zero chance of passing that right now, obviously. Right. So it's more of a thing like we have that plan. So if you vote for us in November, then we can implement that plan. So that could, I mean, for electric readers, it's certainly a big deal for sure. I'm sure, but yeah, uh, is it going to be a big deal that like a. a is it going to be an issue, a critical issue during the campaign? I, I, I somehow doubt it. I wish it but, would be, but I don't. Think, yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah, I've heard Biden talk about electric cars a few times, but it wasn't really inspiring. Well, exactly. If you ask me, the guy is not just it's not really inspiring to start with. But anyway, um, and and it's not just Biden or Trump. You like uh, the Democrats will also need to win the Senate, and I don't even know if that's possible, really. Uh, at that point, I, I know that senators are super hard to uh, to dethrone, if you will. Um, is it, do you think is that even a possibility for the House, for the Democrats to win the Senate? In I mean, Trump's looking really poor right now, but, yeah. uh, you know, things can change. Obviously, you know, there's been like a hundred times where you think Trump is like 
can't possibly get any support from now on for, you know, like he has done something that totally should have destroyed his career. And yeah. of course it hasn't. No. So I, I won't count him out until he's like literally out of the white house. Yeah. Uh, that's probably a safe a safe uh, way to approach it, but yeah, but but Senate Senate wise though, like uh, I, I know it's super hard for senators in the U.S. to to, to get uh, on the. It is hard, and that they're every six years versus the House, which is every two years. So yeah, so there's not going to be as many seats up. Right, for only a th only a third are yeah. now. I mean, there's some big ones like uh, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority mm -hmm. Leader, is up for re-election. Um, mm -hmm. There's like you know. There's some like middle of the road people like uh, Susan Collins in Maine. Mm. Um, I know that she's going to face a tough uh, reelection there. Well, um, what what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing right now is that what, what would make the biggest difference? Like I, I hear everyone talking about oh, the Rock should should run or like uh, Oprah Winfrey should, should run every time. Uh, like they want they want celebrities to run because Trump Trump managed to win like that, but. Uh, what I'm saying, like you, you should put stars, like people like that have influence and like. Not, but not just actual celebrities, but like more popular politicians, um, and you should put them on, up for election on Senate seat, that critical Senate seat that the Republican have, so that the Democrat can take the Senate and 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 pass legislation like that. Because if you ask me, that's one of the most critical uh, legislation that any government can pass right now, like forcing EV cells and and a cleaning of the electric grid. Yeah. And, um, you know, Biden's been pretty wishy-washy on a lot of the progressive things that mm -hmm. you know, like healthcare and, and obviously the environment, mm -hmm. but I mean, what is the alternative? Like you basically have a choice between somebody who's, you know, appointing coal lobbyists to the EPA positions, or you have, you know, a guy who's like, you know, not inspiring a little bit kind of old, and out of yeah. it, but, maybe a, a little bit mental decline going on. But you know, fine. Like frankly, I would take like you know, I, I don't want to say anything too bad, but I'm just saying like Trump is actively bad. Mm. So you know, for the environment and ten thousand other things, but like he's actively bad for the U.S. Yeah. Like picking somebody who you know isn't a hundred percent, you know, your favorite. Is going to be better than that. Yeah. Well, the way I see it personally is more like uh, the cabinet. Like, like you, you know, our cabinet gets built. Like it's all, it's all negotiation and everything. Right. Like, oh yeah, I gave you that, you give me that, whatever. Like it's, it's uh, what do you call it? Chrono, chronism. Chronism. Yeah. Chronism. So I, I feel like building uh, a cabinet with Trump's chronism versus Biden's chronism is going to result in a better cabinet with more um with people that are more in their places like they they, they can do a better job on, on their biden, biden's cabinet than, than trump yeah i think I, I, on an actual I, I, personal I, level though i don't i don't like biden more than i like trump uh, but on on the efficiency of government and and passing legislation that actually benefit the people yeah for sure i think biden's cabinet's gonna have a better impact yeah and you mentioned cronyism it, but this is, you know, possibly good cronyism. Um, I believe uh, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez is now Biden's, you know, environment uh, liaison or whatever part, mm -hmm. you know, part of her, you know, getting behind him. Um, so that's good. She's, you know, the Green mm -hmm. New Deal, kind of mm -hmm. all that, all that stuff. Uh, she's the kind of in touch with all that stuff. Yeah. Although she's been critical of Tesla a little bit. Um, on, uh, yeah, she's definitely on the left, uh, far left. Uh, oh on, yeah, on all these shoes. So she, but, but you know, we need yeah, that. She's passionate bit. about it. Yeah, she's passionate about that. That that's the, the the main thing. I think that, that that we need. Like you need through passion about those things. If it's, uh, but at the same time, like the, the economics of of them of it works so much of EVs and, and uh, renewable energy that you, you'd think that. There'd be no reason other than protecting fossil fuel interests uh, in in going uh, electric and and uh, renewable energy in the grid, but that's uh, money uh, talks a lot in politics. Yeah. All right, moving on. That was actually our biggest article of the week. For some reason, people like to trash Nikola. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I posted earlier this week on uh, Nikola Motors. 
uh, actually, it's Nikola Mortar. Like, uh, I'm so confused about that. Like, some company called them some mortars and some other mortars. So it's Nikola Mortar. I got it wrong here. I put mortars. Well, they've only built one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, It'll be plural at some point in the future. Yeah, they they uh, opened the order book for the Badger, which is their electric slash fuel cell pickup truck, and concept. Co concept, yeah. So. The interesting thing here is that if you don't know the history of the Badger, let me uh, sum it up for you in, in a few seconds. They decided to design the truck. So they built a few render of a pickup truck. What would the pick, a pickup truck built by Nikola look like? And they built a few renders. And Trevor Milton, Nikola's founder and chief executive, decided to tweet them out to Elon and Tesla prior to the Cybertruck unveiling. And and what I assume was like a tongue-in-cheek comment, like if you want to use that design, you're welcome. We don't plan on making an electric pickup truck. That that's the important part here. That was back in November. We don't plan on doing an electric pickup truck. Then, of course, Tesla unveiled a Cybertruck, and Trevor Milton uh, apparently didn't like that design, so he decided we're actually going to build the pickup truck that we release renders of. And because Tesla is not making a cool-looking pickup truck, in his opinion. Fast forward to a few months later, and they unveiled the, the specs for the truck. And the specs are pretty pretty crazy, pretty uh, uh, nice, really. Like uh, they are talking about 600 miles of range, 0 to 16, 2.9 seconds, like everything competitive with, with uh, Tesla's uh, Cybertruck, basically. And um, but the powertrain is they, they have an all electric powertrain option, which they say can give you up to 400 miles of range. And they have some kind of fuel cell range extender to give you to that 600 miles range. Um, but at, at that time, when they released those specs, that was still, they were still only renders. There's no prototype or anything like that. Now we're a few months later, and they start taking reservation with a $5,000 deposit. And still no working prototype. So he's asking for $5,000 based on renders like that. And so we're, we're talking about crazy valuation with Tesla, two hundred billion dollars. But I think Tesla's valuation is not crazy at all compared to Nikola's valuation at twenty-five billion dollars for those random. Yeah, they're worth twenty-five oh billion. They never delivered anything yet. Um, yeah. Okay. One of the, the 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 weirdest part of this whole thing is that just a few years ago, um, when when Nikola unveiled the, their, their semi truck, the semi electric slash fuel cell truck, they, they started taking their reservation with deposit. But years later, they announced that they're going to refund all the deposits. And uh, they're, they're, they, they, they were sort of taking a jab at Tesla in the process, saying that, oh, we don't like how other companies um, raise capital through deposit for, for reservation. And so we, we refund everything. And now, just two years later, they, they are actually doing the same thing again. <laughs> so they do claim that, oh, we're not going to use the money to, to, uh, to do anything. It's going to go into a separate account and whatnot, which is fair. But still, like you, you're still using that money. You're leveraging that money in a different account. Still, like it's and, and it's still an interest-free loan, basically. But at least one from the customer co consumer side. But yeah, I mean, what, what, it, what it looks to me, really, is uh, we're starting to see a pattern from, from Nikola where, because uh, I don't know if we, we talked about that before, but the Bloomberg article from a few weeks ago that said that um, uh, when they first saw Vilda, their Tesla, uh, not the Tesla, <laughs> of course, the, uh, the semi truck, uh, on stage, Milton was claiming that it was a working prototype. He even joked about, like, oh, don't push any buttons because we don't want it to go like anywhere. Uh, but actually, there was no, not even a full powertrain inside the car, uh, the truck, and it wasn't drivable. So I'm seeing this pattern right now where uh, Nikola announced a project, some renders or some shell of a prototype that's not working and everything, gathers a ton of, uh, claims some crazy specs on them, which people are impressed by, gather some reservation, raise some money, and then try to figure it out after. <laughs> Which uh, of course is not ideal, and you could draw draw some parallel to Tesla on that. But to Tesla's defense, I don't think they ever raise money on any vehicle, took deposits or anything like that without 
showing a working prototype first. Am I am I right about that? Uh, I mean, I feel like the Model Y, you could make a deposit before they showed it. I mean, they certainly had the prototype, but w was, wasn't it like you could make a deposit before you saw it? Like, I don't think so. I feel like it was when they unveiled it in March 2019, no? Yeah, but I, I feel like you couldn't... No, I feel like you can you could make a reservation before they unveiled it. Oh yeah, I don't remember that. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, but like the Tesla Semi, I, they unveiled they, the prototype. They took reservation. The yeah, they had they had the through. vehicle. I mean, it was just a yeah, day. But the only one I'm not sure about it might be like the Model S or something like that because there was, uh, I think they took reservation pretty early on that. Really? So early, Mall, yeah. yeah, the Model S. I'm not so sure, but everything else. Um, there, there was, a, I think the Roadster, I think the, even the Roadster, they had a prototype for it when they started taking reservation, like 2006 or something. Yeah, I mean, that might have been the T0, though. Yeah. I don't know. Mm, I feel like there was a shell of a Roadster. Right. Of course, the Roadster changed a lot over the years. But, and you know, the Roadster was basically a Lotus Elite. So yeah, 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 yeah. And at first, it was very much a Lotus Elite, and then they changed a lot of parts on it and everything. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I don't like Nikola at all anymore. <laughs> like I used to like them, but nowadays, like uh, it's shady, 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 shady to me. So uh, if you want, oh yeah, one of the craziest part, the the Diesel Brothers. So they partner with the Diesel Brothers to to uh, to promote the Badger, and for every sale that they made, that Nikola made, the Diesel Brothers get like a big chunk of of shares of Nikola, like a big one. And I think they might have negotiated the deal like very early, like before the, the stock sh shut up and everything when they went public. So, so like they, they get like they could get like a hundred million dollars from this deal if they, they sell like a, just a decent amount. So it's pretty crazy. Speaking um, of diesel, uh, I believe that they also paid or Trevor Milton also paid Shaq to uh, yeah. to hype the brand, which seems a little doesn't look good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't know for sure that he paid him, but Shaq tweeted about it, and I would assume that it would be like a paid promotion. But all right, let's move on to the taken, the Porsche taken. Uh, you posted on that, or you said you had the scoop on it. What's up with the real drive version of the taken? So we found out from Porsche that uh, the the rear wheel drive, so the inexpensive Taycan, well, is inexpensive, <laughs> relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, Taycan uh, would only be coming to China as of now, and th they had no announcements for the U.S. or even Europe, which is weird because, mm -hmm. like, it's their I'm home sure, market. I'm sure some Germans would love to have a Taycan. <laughs> anyway, um, it, you know that was kind of surprising, and I was kind of like, "Are you sure? Like, that seems like, uh, you know, is this some PR stunt or whatever?" And they're, they're like, "No, no, we just don't know. Uh, the, the The Germans haven't told us." Um, if they're going to sell the the Taycan in, in Germany or the U.S., you know, also a very big market uh, and clearly one where the Taycan would sell quite well, I think, uh, or the the base model. Um, so, you know, the idea is that uh, this car is only rear wheel drive. It it gets a pretty lackluster, I have to say, for the for the horsepower, five point four seconds, zero to sixty. Um, it's like the base model three, basically. Yeah, I mean that's. I feel like that's like close to like the Chevy Bolt, you know. <laughs> like it's not. It's really not slow or not speedy for a Porsche. Anyway, it would be fine. It looks great. It's gonna be. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It, look, it looks great. I think that's really for people that like the design of the Taycan and they don't want to pay a hundred plus thousand dollars. But we yeah. don't know the price, do we? Uh, so th there was a a report that the price would be eight hundred eighty-eight thousand uh, RMB in China, which was like. You know, if you do the straight conversion, it's like a hundred something thousand US, but that wouldn't make sense because the the um, the four S the four yeah. S is a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So you know, we kind of guessed, and I think Porsche nodded our head that if it did come to the US, it would probably be in the you know seventy five eighty thousand dollar range. Of course, that's base model, and and you can go way up from there on Porsche options. So yeah, yeah, for sure. But I mean. It's a it's a gorgeous car. Uh, I think you know ninety nine percent of the time you'll be fine with uh, a very quick rear wheel drive. You know this isn't like an all off roading vehicle by any stretch. So um, also it, it it's the Porsche now with the longest range uh, because the rear wheel drive is there. The wheels are also a little bit more economical. 
um, in terms of yeah, the avenarial wheel, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and and that's really the only big difference in appearance um, from this car from from the others, uh, more expensive ones. Obviously, the 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 brake pads on the on the uh, turbos are going to be a little bit more impressive, but from for the but most they're not part, even visible with the aerial wheels anyway. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I like that color. Yeah. Uh, that color is nice. Interior like, is gorgeous. Like, it, yeah. If you look at the interior, it's like, I, I kind of want to be in there. Mm -hmm. And the seats are really good. Like, uh, you know, a lot of lateral support. Um, it's, a nice, it's a really nice car. It's a Porsche. That's, and it, you know, it is pretty quick. It's not, uh, I'm, I'm actually, so I'm, I'm a fan of this car for sure, but I'm kind of looking forward to the Macan, uh, follow up. Mm -hmm. I know they were working with Remac on that. Um, it's going to be like four wheel drive instead of, yeah, uh, it's not just like, uh, the poor, uh, taken power train with um, a make and body on it. It's right. going to be some upgrades, right? Right, and it's going to have four motors, so like theoretically, it could tank turn or something like that. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it's it's going to be a, like a total total overhaul. It's going to be all you know, uh, kind of a new thing. And we we had heard it was coming soon, but it sounds like sooner is getting pushed. Soon is getting pushed back to uh, next year now. Yeah, we we thought for sure we're gonna see it this year. Now it's not even sure we're gonna see it. Right, it was definitely not coming this year, but might not even see the the prototype for it. Um, next, we have the uh, Nissan Aria. We've been talking about that forever. We thought it was gonna be launched like five years ago, but now we're gonna see uh, the production version on July fifteenth. So it's coming up in just two weeks. Yep. Uh, we've seen the prototype. The, the pro, that is that's the one called Aria. I don't think the. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we're gonna see the um, the, the uh, I, don't, I don't think it's gonna be called the production version. It's gonna be called Aria, is it? I mean, it could be. It could be something else though. Um, Aria has kind of just been the the prototype name. Yeah. But uh, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Nissan's kind of famous for really diluting down their uh, prototypes yes. Yes. to uh, like. Like it, I'm really hoping this doesn't look like a leaf at the end. No, of it, you know? because the the prototype looks good. The the, the, yeah. the Aria concept looks good. Yeah. So uh, it could use some toning down for the production version for sure, but not that much. I mean, of course, those wheels are insanely big. They're not going to be that big. Uh, the wheel well a little bit too pronounced. Uh, but I like that curve in the in the body here. If, if they released that the 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 prototype, I think it would sell well. Yeah. Um. You know, I don't know how they would get to a Nissan type price with mm -hmm. with those kind of options. Yeah, but it's a it's a good looking car in its current form. And um, you know, we at CES this year we got to drive basically the drivetrain that's going to be in this thing, mm -hmm. um, which was pretty impressive. Like they basically just told us to floor it and and like turn the wheel and, and um, the uh, all wheel drive system in it, uh, mm -hmm. kind of you know instead of us rolling over or whatever uh it kind of compensated and allowed us to stay in our lane so th there's some cool stuff behind the scenes there too it just uh nissan just has to get it out the door like they, yeah they really have just been teasing this thing for years now but it's apparently uh, like the, the unveiling on the july 15 but it the sales are going to start early next year i think right i think that's the, the uh, target right now. i think that's the target yeah yeah uh, though it's going to be market launch Oh, not expected in the U.S. until 2021, though. So it's going to be probably China, Europe first, and then come later to the U.S. Yeah, Japan, obviously. Yeah, Japan, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to be waiting for that one. But uh, I think, uh, I don't know, like maybe a lot of people, I think, were disappointed. Like the, the core EV fans might not go for it because they kind of felt let down by Nissan a little bit uh, for that car to be so late. But... If they can get the pricing right, they're gonna conquer people back for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm worried they're gonna go with Chatamo on that though. Like if they do oh, Chatamo boy. on there, I'm I'm I don't know. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. If yeah. they do if they do Chatamo, then it's gonna be kind of a hard thing to recommend. Yeah. All right, last one. Uh if you have some questions, guys, please put them in the comment section on the right right now. We'll get to them after this one. 
Lucid announced this week that uh, they announced the drag coefficient really of the of the air, and it's 0.21, which is uh, technically uh, the lowest for an electric car or any luxury car really, uh, beating the Model S. And of course, we've been talking about uh, Lucid hyping up the range of the hair, like saying that it's going to be one of the most efficient car uh, on the market. It's going to be more efficient than the Model S. Of course, I think it's a little bit smaller than the Model S too. So let's be fair here. Though they keep saying that they're going to have like it's smaller on the outside, but it feels bigger on the inside. So we'll see. Um, the unveiling of that car is coming soon too. Was supposed to be. Uh, last month, uh, no, in April, but uh, it was a New York show that was canceled. Now it's coming in uh, this. Uh, when is it coming? Oh, wow, no, uh, didn't include that here. I'm not sure. Uh, let, me, let me see. Uh, I think it's in September, if I'm not mistaken. Spelled lucid wrong. Did I spell that wrong? L U C I D. Um, Lucy, September 9, it's coming in the unveiling of the Lucy there. We have a new search engine on electric. If you want to try that out, if you have a question, don't, you can always uh, put them in the search bar and you're going to get your answer on everything electric. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm still excited about that car. Like, uh, they, they do have a factory now in Arizona, it's coming up together, so it's going to be uh, one of the main EV startup that actually is going to deliver, I think. like. It's good news. All right, let's get to the questions. All right, Jose F says, question, does this quarter's delivery numbers mean we were all wrong about demand? I am shocked Tesla can hit these numbers during a pandemic. Uh, I, well, so we have always expected the Model Y to have a lot of untapped mm -hmm. demand. Um, so I'm not shocked, actually. Uh, I feel like Tesla's going to sell I think we've said this before. I think they're going to sell all the Model Ys they can make uh, for years. Um, so I would say no. But but I think when you said like you said, people thought that Tesla had them in problems in Q2, and and now it shows that it down because of the deliveries. I I don't think that's exactly right. I think Tesla had some them in problems in Q2, and then they did those price drop, and then that helped and that helped them moving forward. I think that's. As simple as that. It doesn't mean that they didn't have pro uh, demand problem, Wh which comes back to something we've been seeing for a while. Tesla doesn't have long-term demand problem. They have short-term, geographical-based demand problems, and they fix that as they go, uh, which they did again this uh, this quarter. Because if you look at the price drop, they weren't the same everywhere too. Like they, they were mainly in the U.S. where Tesla was trying to deliver as many cars possible without having to put them on, on boats and things like that. So. All right, Johnny B says the deliveries are impressive. I'm skeptical about about profit, but it would be awesome. Um, yeah, so we talked about profit. Yeah. It's going to be somewhere near break even. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I don't think, you know, if they come out with a small profit or a small loss in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge deal. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they show there's demand there. They show they can make cars. Um. So I just ordered a tri-motor Cybertruck. When can I expect delivery? Three years. Uh, well, apparently it's going to be this, the first model that they make about Cybertruck. So officially the timeline is late 2021. But yeah, more if you're being cautious about it, I'd say mid-2022. I mean, the Cybertruck factory status right now is we don't even know where it's going to be officially. And, yeah. and unofficially is moving dirt so <laughs> they're, they're moving dirt in austin right now so yeah. uh that's and, and, and then they're moving dirt also for my understanding the plan for the austin factory is to get a general assembly line for model y up and running super fast right uh, to, to to fulfill the model y demand that like said just mentioned is strong but um the cyber truck i think the, the it's going to be parallel to the construction of that ga line for for the model y to a degree, but I don't think it's going to be the main priority until next year. All right. Cedric Weinstein says Elon is pounding shorts and the SEC and Twitter with very big numbers right now. It's brutal. Uh, he's, he's definitely dunking on people. Mm -hmm. 
so I'm all for uh, dunking on the <laughs> anti EV folks and the shorts. Uh, I'm not so on board with Elon's COVID stuff. Yeah. Um, and the SEC, I kind of feel like, why mess with them? Yeah, <laughs> just you're asking for trouble. They got you before. They got right. you pretty good. Yeah, twenty million dollars it cost you. So it, it was cost Tesla shareholders too. Well, it, yeah, well, tw- yeah, it cost shareholders. Yeah, they, the, the stock took a hit in the process, but directly they, they had like twenty million in fine for Elon, twenty million in fine for Tesla, which I think Elon sort of ended up paying by the by the back door, but. Uh, the the guy, <laughs> he, yeah, he, uh, he, he had to settle. All yeah. right, uh, is the autopilot worth eight thousand dollars? Asks Adrian Farkas. Well, it's not the autopilot, to be fair, and I can't. It's the FSD, so it's the promise of FSD, really. That's is it worth eight thousand dollars? It is if they deliver. It's worth a lot more than that if they deliver. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would pay eight thousand dollars today for mm-hmm. a fully functioning autopilot. All right. Uh, so glad for Tesla. Fred nailed the deliveries almost perfectly. I was less skeptic. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to start getting into like the single digits of your mm-hmm. estimates, Fred, because you've, you've been <laughs> hitting not, the round numbers pretty well. I'm not quite there yet. All right. What do you think of the Giga Berlin permit petition where Tesla says no plastic parts or batteries made on the site? Isn't it a major bummer that Tesla will not make their own cells on site? Yeah, I think we touched that a little bit earlier. Uh, I, I think the updated plan that they released today is, is more about like the first phase of construction and like getting things up and running as fast as possible. Because Tesla is uh, right now, like installing pillar on the side, they, they're actually building a building right now and they don't have the final approval for the project. So they, they I think they're just trying to like work around that. And then once that's up and running, then they're gonna continue the expansion. But if you look on my article that I just posted on Electric, I showed the, the, the updated plans for the site and you can see that it still works within the, the, the plan with the bigger like four building things like, like they, they were planning in Gigafactory Shanghai too. So I think that's still in the plan, just maybe not, not for now. All right. Uh, so somebody who orders autopilot for 7K will still get it for 7K. Right? Well, that's Johnny B. So I think he's referencing to the Cybertruck order. And I've heard that a lot. I've, I've heard that Tesla is apparently uh, if you reserve with 100 bucks, you reserve a Cybertruck at the pricing of the autopilot at the time, you still get that pricing when two years from now when you order. So that, that that one is weird for me because knowing how Tesla transfer reservation through orders, that's not as work in the past. So I'm surprised by that. Uh, and because because then yeah, like go for it. Then everybody says yeah, you get the full self driving on it because if you don't want it because Tesla like let's say autopilot the self driving fails by the time the Cybertruck reaches the market, you can get them off of that uh, order anyway. So I don't know. Uh, Tesla can easily raise billions now with minimal stock dilution. Uh, uh, well, yeah, technically, yes, with minimal stock dilution because the stock is so valuable. Um, but they just did that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so are they going to do that again now? Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like they need to focus on you know, getting out of debt. Especially if they can break even on a quarter like this one. Uh, you, they're gonna make money next quarter if they deliver 120,000 cars or something like that. So right, uh, current autopilot is very good, and hope the rewrite will be much better. Says Daniel Tong. Uh, that that's true. Uh, it's pretty good. Not not perfect though. Uh, John Borm says Neo is doing well. New records on deliveries. And hey, we haven't heard from Neo in a while. Yeah, they had 10,000 deliveries in Q2. Uh, cool. pretty good yeah i think they have they up like a hundred percent in june so doing well well i mean the, the chinese market in this barely taking a hit from the whole COVID thing so i don't know what uh, they're doing boating dave says so do you think that the new batteries will actually be into the model s ahead of battery day then turned on with software update afterwards uh what are your thoughts on that i i imagine uh, so. yeah i mean the, historically tesla has when they do announce something, for, for the, it's it's been in the um, vehicles for a few days, weeks, or even months to a degree. So yeah, that's not that's not impossible. But we're not even sure that uh, Model S is going to be the first car to get the new batteries just yet. So it's still a rumor at this point. 
John Borum says June deliveries represented 179% growth year over year. The second quarter, Neo delivered 10,331 vehicles, an increase of 190% year over year, an increase of 169% quarter over quarter. So doing quite well. Yeah. Uh, of course, last year, Neo was still at the beginning of their, yeah, their process. Hard. So, so it's easier to get bigger numbers like that, but it's still not easy. It's easier, not easy. So uh, congrats to them for sure. Uh, Cedric says Elon's net worth is now over 50 billion US dollars on paper. Anyhow, he has said he will never sell his Tesla SpaceX stock. Uh, I don't know about that exactly. I don't know he said that, but uh, I think he might have to for tax purposes at some point. Uh, to yeah. Agree. But yeah, uh, 50 billion? I thought it could be even more at this point because he, you know, he owns like 22% of Tesla. That's a 20%. That's uh, forty billion dollars, over forty billion dollars for Tesla alone, and I think it's more than ten billion for SpaceX. I think SpaceX is worth like thirty billion or something like that. No, and he owns like fifty percent of it, or something. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's not public, so it's hard yeah. to. All right, uh, what full self-driving safety level will be required to make it obvious that it should be allowed everywhere? It that's, will never be allowed if <laughs> that, yeah. that's, that's oh, well, and not, not never yeah not never never but it's there's never be one standard for everywhere that, that's that's for that's for clear that, that's for sure so it's going to be allowed regulators per market at a time with different jurisdictions so depending on where you are it might not be allowed and, and everything so uh, uh, it, it's going to be a slow and long process john borum says dems will win look at the polls uh the polls are good right now for Dems to win, but uh, the polls are also good for Dems to win the day <laughs> before Trump got elected. So yeah. everybody vote. Yeah. All right, Johnny B, at my age, in the length of time to receive Cybertruck, full self-driving was a no-brainer for me. All right. Uh, would be nice if full self-driving was linked to you personally, though maybe one max one per car. So if you bought a new Tesla, you wouldn't have to shell out new money for it. That's a yeah. good one. A lot of people I, have been making that argument, yeah. I mean, it's software, right? We're used mm -hmm. to buying software once, yeah. putting it on more more than one computer, uh, especially cloud software. You would think, like, it just transfers wherever I go. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting to see how Tesla addresses that in the future. There's all, all kinds of questions. Like, uh, you know, if you total your Tesla um, and you have self-driving in that totaled car and you get a replacement, like, shouldn't mm -hmm. self-driving just go into the thing or should the insurance pay for it? Or, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's, it brings up it, the software brings up a new question. Uh, all right, there's some conversation here. Uh, Cedric says, I hear most of Nicola employees are actually Photoshop professionals. Uh, that's a good zinger. Uh, what production delivery level do you think uh, Tesla could have hit for Q2 if they didn't have the factory shut down? Could they have hit 150 with no pandemic? That's a, that's a good question. I, I think maybe. Yeah, maybe because they, they produced 82,000 cars with uh, um, almost half of the quarter without their main factory. Right. Uh -huh. I wonder I wonder if uh, the demand would be there for 150. I guess we'll see this quarter, really. Right. Whatever Tesla can deliver this quarter would be probably similar to, to what Tesla would have hit in Q2. So we'll see. I mean, I'm still waiting for mine. Like, I have a mm -hmm. reservation. I yeah. uh, It's been, <laughs> been forever. Anyway, uh, going back. Well, self-driving in the Netherlands doesn't make sense right now. I know in Europe there's uh, yeah. more. Yeah, you need to have a lot of faith to buy FSD in Europe right now. Uh, Nicola can find all the suppliers they need to meet their specs. Yeah, I think they're not even to that point yet. Mm -hmm. They're still. Uh, I mean, Nicola with their money though at this point they could go out and buy like, you know, uh, Biden. <laughs> you know, like the remnants of Biden. Yeah. And say, Look, this is our truck. Yeah, it just looks like a car at the moment. But I, they don't even want to build it, that truck. Like uh, Milton has been clear, he doesn't want to build the Badger. Well, he literally didn't want to build it before, but now that he's yeah he's bringing it to market, he still doesn't want to build it himself. He's, he says that he's going to announce a partnership with a company to build it. So, so, so they were what they're a design and engineering company. They don't even manufacture a truck. So, so meh. maybe maybe Rivian. Hmm. Uh, does Nikola also put, sell power walls and such? No, they don't do that. Well, actually, they do have a Nikola Energy uh, division, yeah. like Tesla does. They have an energy division, but I don't yeah. think they have power walls. Uh, it's not power, but the, it, it, they were talking about energy storage and uh, solar, just like Tesla Energy. 
All right, uh, going down here. All right, Shaq is no fool. He's got a doctorate in education. Uh, but I mean, he got paid for it. He's no he fool. <laughs> He's not the one with the fool. <laughs> right. Uh, I haven't seen those Tykins in the Netherlands re really much yet. Model 3 is like everywhere. Yeah, I mean, the Tykins are 150,000 US <laughs> euro. Uh, <laughs> A lot fewer people can afford one. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, Taycan is cool, but 100K. Uh, more Taycan stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a Model 3 without full self-driving computer, but purchased full self-driving a while ago. Should I push to get the upgrade now or wait and hope to get the next version full self-driving computer? There's no reason to have the new computer until you have full self-driving, so... Well, he says he do have. He purchased. Yeah. He oh, yeah. He, so he should push for it. Well, it depends. Uh, if he's in Europe right now, doesn't change much of anything. So then right. my, my, you can wait. Um, but yeah, we we don't know exactly when that new FSD computer is going to launch, but it's apparently going to because when they announced the first FSD computer and everything, right away they said, well, we have an even better chip coming later. So people were like, right, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, Gil Gij von Dolman asked, do you think the battery expansion will also enable the Roadster to be built sooner? Uh, the Roadster is already late, um, mm. but we do believe that the battery day will uh, unveil technology that will help. We'll the, in the Roadster. Uh, yeah, for sure. But I don't think it's going to accelerate the timeline. No, they don't have a clear timeline right now. It's they're not big, in a hurry to make that. They've yeah, got they, the basically the best we got, best we got is after Cybertruck right now. That's the best timeline we got. And the Cybertruck timeline doesn't even seem real at this yeah. point. Uh, all right, let's keep going here. Model Y. Uh, will Tesla get access to government rebates with the seven-seat version of the Model Y in Canada? No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on that. If you're waiting for that, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on it. Because uh, it just goes up to fifty-five thousand dollars starting price. And I, I don't think the Model Y with seven seats is going to be fifty-five thousand dollars. I'm actually considering waiting uh, because my Model Y, you know, hasn't come. If mm -hmm. if there's going to be a seven seater, I might be worth waiting. I wish they would show like, is it facing what? forward and back? What does it look yeah. like? So I can make that choice. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something we'll see on Battery Day as well. Um, Nissan Aria with Chatmo is a real deal breaker. Yeah, I, I really hope they don't do that. Or if they do have Chatmo, I hope they have like an adapter or something. Mm. Um, most Chatmo in the U.S. is 50 kilowatt, which is kind of slow. Uh, reserved a Cybertruck a few weeks ago, and my reservation was over 800,000, according to the formula online. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that formula is exactly right, though. Like it, it might not be a non-sequential number. We're not sure. Uh, I don't know. Understand this one? Would a battery between old and new cells? No. What's a giant mother? Uh, I think that's a truck that goes through the mud. Modified <laughs> semi truck to become a giant mm -hmm. mother. That would be kind of fun. They had the uh, at the semi launch. They did have a uh, pickup made out of a cyber truck, which was had, oh, yeah, yeah. It had like a Ford F one fifty in the back. You mean a pickup made out of the Tesla semi? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, cyber quad. That would be fun to have the pricing on that. Uh, I would agree, Cooper. Don't know, don't know what Cooper. I would like the pricing. Can we, can we guess? Do you have a guess? Five thousand. Yeah, I think that's about right. Probably. It's kind of it's expensive for an ATV for sure. But if you're buying like a seventy thousand dollar cyber truck, have right. five thousand, and it comes with uh, old electric uh, squad and uh, and it's technically the cheapest Tesla vehicle you can buy, <laughs> even, it's, even though it's expensive for a quad. All right. Cost Dog says, excellent. I got three of the $100 reservations, which means I can resell them for at least $1,000 more. So that's 27 by profit when everybody wants a cyber truck and I have three reservations. Uh, uh, I don't know if your math works out there. I yeah. Think, I think there's going to be a lot of people with those reservations uh, and maybe not the money. And also, Tesla's not great about yeah, the way they don't they, they don't follow closely to the reservation process. So unless you goss dog, you're in California, maybe. But if not, like uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on that. Shake and Bake says, is Toyota having a hard time getting batteries for the Rav4 Prime? Nissan will be in the same boat and will be hard pressed to ever see one in the wild. 
uh, we'll definitely see the Nissan in the wild. They're definitely going to build it, and there's definitely people who are going to buy the Nissan. Um, but the Toyota Prime thing is really disappointing. When we saw that news, we were kind of like, you know, yeah, is it five thousand units for the U.S.? Five thousand for the U.S. And this is like their best-selling vehicle. Yeah. So uh, the the Rav Four is. So just having five thousand is kind of a joke. Um, all right, we're almost done here, and I'm looking at all the, the last questions. Uh, and they're kind of just comments. Mm -hmm. So I think we're done. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for everyone to listening to the podcast and watching on YouTube. You can give us a thumbs up and subscribe uh, on YouTube or uh, subscribe on the podcast app and leave us a review. That's always appreciated, like I said earlier on on the podcast. And uh, we're going to see you same place, same times. Uh, well, actually, not same place, same times, because it's going to be on Friday, as usual, start back next week. So see you then. Have a good one. Stay safe.